So I guess what this annihilation thing really revealed to me as I'm watching it unfold uh, is a la still a lack of clarity about what the gospel is. And it's really, it is griefsome. Um, you know, people are coming to my wall saying that I need to be fighting against this thing, fighting against annihilationism. Um, let me tell you how I knew about it. I knew about it because people were emailing me saying that Mr. Christian is backloading works more and more heavily the more he pushes this war against annihilationism. And he said things like, you can get your name blotted out of the book of life. You can, uh, if you have the doctrine of Christ, or if you have the testimony of Christ, that doesn't mean you're saved, because lordshippers have it too, which means he doesn't know what the doctrine of Christ is. Uh, that you, that Judas had the spirit. I mean, these are just the things I kind of covered, but, uh, and, and, and so he's an evidence that just because you have the spirit doesn't mean you're saved. And he said that, uh, without a changed life, you can't be saved. And people have all emailed me over the year about, you know, are you, is this what he means? Is this what he means? You know, and I, and I have gone to bat in the past thinking, well, he's getting clear. It's just a language thing, but no, <laughs> uh, Meanwhile, he's defending DTBM and Lordship Ministry, and uh, I mean, it's getting worse and worse. The more he pushes this annihilation thing, the less clear on the gospel he seems to be getting. And that was why I brought it up. Because, again, my issue is not whether or not annihilationism, which I don't believe in, is heretical, which I do believe. My issue is that you cannot say that someone doesn't who who is justified by faith in Christ can be not saved because they're not clear about the duration of suffering in hell. Okay? You can't say that and be clear about the gospel. That shows that you are not clear about the gospel. Now, so I have a challenge if Mr. Christian hears this. I want you to do a gospel video, pure gospel. I want to see you announce the gospel in a way that someone can get saved. Okay. Um, now, the uh, other thing is many of the people who have taken up this call to arms against annihilationism, as I'm talking to them, I'm realizing they haven't led anybody to the Lord. <laughs> In a long time, if ever, uh, because it's clear that they don't know how the gospel works and what saves people. And it makes me wonder if they understand what the gospel is. That's what I keep seeing. Because at this point, years into the grace community's clear distinction, distinctive, regarding their, you know, bringing their doctrine of justification clearly to the body of Christ. You shouldn't still be confused listening to people who are sending you to lordship channels uh, and backloading works and all their messages. Um, that shouldn't confuse you. And if I'd have known, if I, I should have listened to more of his actual messages and not just skimmed them, uh, I, you know... I didn't realize how bad it was, but now it's like clear, you know. Um, but that's a question. You know, you are supposedly fighting for the integrity of the gospel. My question is, have you preached it lately? Because you're, you're loading it up with uh, more than is necessary for someone to be saved. Um, and here's the other thing. This annihilationism thing is not something that's been sweeping our community. It is not this big ugly foe that's reared its head and we're dealing with it everywhere. I haven't seen it on my wall at all before this. So, what I see is that somebody got themselves a hobby horse so that they could become a warrior and have a unique cause and build an identity around it. And they're boxing against the air. And they're fighting a battle that's not even real. 
really. And everybody's getting caught up in it. And they're the ones generating the trend that they supposedly are fighting. There was no wind of annihilationism ripping through the body of Christ before this was brought up, before someone started to make it their unique cause to come, across, come against these things and measure everybody based on their stand with it. No, that's just somebody who has risen up in his flesh and is sowing division. And you can see him sowing division if you just go around and see the YouTube channels where he's commenting and he's warning everybody that, you know, he was deceived. And the Grace Community, we all have a Jezebel spirit and he was deceived. Well, if you were deceived, then maybe you should take yourself out of the equation until you get clear which is why you need to work on the gospel. And maybe you should do some messages about the gospel and let's see what, where you stand, really. Um, it is sad. This whole thing is sad. The, and it's, it's creating a lot of damage and it's just the beginning. Uh, but no, from what I see, the people who are f leading the cause to fight for the so-called integrity of the gospel cannot clearly articulate the gospel and are loading it up with works and then characterizing me as somehow making friends with annihilationists when I don't even know any. I've got one person on my wall who says it's not something he'll budge from and yet he's still open to fellowship and I know he's a brother in Christ and somebody else was a troll who I've blocked and that's it. You know, the Lordship thing, I've seen that all over my wall. Hyper dispensational, I've seen that all over my wall. I've never seen annihilationism come up on my wall before. This is not this big battle. These people are making uniforms for and equipping soldiers to fight. This is an imaginary battle. Okay, I'm not saying that annihilationism is not a problem problematic doctrine but there's a lot of problematic doctrines why are you so keen on this one you know why is this one suddenly such a big deal to you so again are you clear on the gospel do you know what someone needs to believe to be saved okay once you know what message saves then you know what is primary and secondary a secondary issue again is something that you can be confused about and yet still be saved. Doesn't mean you're right. Doesn't mean you don't need correction. But that's not the same thing as a primary doctrine where if you don't believe it correctly, you cannot be saved. And the gospel is something you cannot believe incorrectly and be saved. You have to get the gospel right. So, I feel like the Lord is using these things this last year as every wind that has swept through like this has been a test about the gospel to see if you can recognize the gospel and if you can side with it in all of the different contexts it applies to and whether you can recognize someone who has the testimony of Christ as a brother. And in each case, what we've seen is a huge falling away of people who we thought were grace believers. But then when the test came, they couldn't recognize brothers by the testimony and ended up rejecting the gospel in favor of some other point they were trying to make. So, uh, it's pretty sad. And I know you guys are tired of hearing about this, but I'm seeing it constantly on my wall uh, from people coming over from these other channels. And I'm seeing it on other channels. I can't get away from it. And I tell you what, the buzz about it didn't exist before someone took up this cause and made it a buzz, which tells you something. All right, take it easy.